All right, Luke. So big PWC event coming up, Pittsburgh Wrestling Club, right? Yep. Dave Habit. I, I just got off a call with him and he's excited to wrestle you. And and I said to him, finally he might be wrestling a guy maybe shorter than him. Okay. I don't yeah, know if you're know. He, he doesn't know. He doesn't know though. How tall are you? I'm about five three, five four on a good day. Depends what shoes I have on. Okay, it depends if you got the platforms on or not. Yeah, right. And, you know, I was just talking about the matchup, and it's a great matchup. You know, like, it's really hard to get into Luke Pletcher's hips and legs. And he's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. And, you know, he was he was fired up about it. Though. He was just – he was excited about the matchup. And, you know, as Dave, he's a Slovenian, you know, world team member. has wrestled in multiple world championships. What's it like knowing you get to wrestle a guy with so much international experience in Dave Habit? For me, it's just a great – opportunity to like you said just get get a different feel from someone I've never wrestled you know he's always been much older than me and um you know I've been following the stuff that he does just because he's been around and you know he's doing great things so I think it's you know very beneficial for me to be able to wrestle someone that has the the true freestyle feel you know with you jumping right over from Columbus you know going back near home how far is Latrobe from mm -hmm. Pittsburgh like an hour. It's not that far. So, yeah, you – what were you, four or five hours from home at, in Columbus? Yeah, it's about three and a half. Three and a half, so. okay. So, now yeah. you're back home. You get to – you can go home and do your laundry if you wanted to for all intents and purposes, right? But yep. uh, coming back to PA, you know, going back into PA and being able to, to, you know, build something there at Pitt with Coach Gavin, what is it like going from an athlete to a coach in, in six months in the wildest time – in the last hundred years in the United States of America, what's it been like for you, Luke? It's been great for me. Um, you know, I, you know, obviously I'm still full time, you know, wrestling competing. So they give me a lot of, you know, free will, being able to just train and help out different things where I can. Um, ultimately, when I'm done competing, I think coaching is, you know, the the best option for me. Um, wrestling has has been a part of who I am for as long as I can remember. So. I feel like that's, you know, an avenue where I can make a difference and help some people. But um, just being being back home in Pittsburgh with people that I know that I grew up with and trained with before is just, it's been awesome. And, uh, you know, I'm, I got close family, you know, we're, we're a tight, tight family. So it's been great to be able to go back to see them more often. We have Wednesdays off. So, you know, I go back and help my younger brother who's a junior in high school. You know, we practice together. So it's, it's just been perfect for me, honestly. So, you know, the biggest thing with this matchup is I love talking matchups, man. I was so – he was so pumped about it. And I, I love that we don't have to go the MMA thing where you guys got to, like, dog each other. He yeah, was right. just so complimentary. Oh, you could do that if you want. I don't care. You can, no, you can, no, you that's, that's not my style. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I figured as much. But, you know, in, in talking to Dave, you know, the biggest thing he was talking about is just how powerful you are in, in your legs. I mean, it is not easy to get in on the legs of – Luke Pletcher. I mean, I think we've seen that. Anybody who watched the, the Big Ten season last year, uh, avenging the Big Ten, uh, Big Ten final loss, right? You won, the, you won the Big Ten final. He lost in the duel, right? Correct. And your style, man. He, he loved it. He's like, how he wrestled last year. How you just let the scoreboard up. Whereas the years before, you're cutting a lot of weight, except for mm -hmm. your freshman year when you wrestled up. But, you know, what, what was the biggest difference from you and – and what do you love about this matchup? Dave's offensive. You're pretty offensive now that you guys are – what's it going to be? 148 basically is what you're weighing in at. What do you love about the matchup with Dave and being two guys who just go? I mean, that's, I mean, that's what we're supposed to do, I think. Um, you know, obviously there's times where you got to, you know, lay low and, you know, do different, different things. But I think the biggest thing I'm looking forward to is, like you said, the, the clash of styles. And I have – I've you know, since I realized I was wrestling him, I watched him a little bit closely. And, um, you know, he's got some different tricks where I think he can attack both sides of the body, which is, you know, a good thing for him. Um, and I feel like I've been changing my game up a little bit just, you know, after the senior national, you know, senior nationals in October or early November, you know, I learned some things there that, you know, the way I wrestled in folk style might not be the smartest thing to do in freestyle, you know, just getting underneath a lot and, you know, I could recover in scrambles and I could win every scramble I felt. But in freestyle, I'm exposing my back and maybe I'll come up on top. But I'm 
you know, I'm losing 2-1 in that scramble, you know. So different, changing different tactics up there is, you know, I'm really excited to put that to the test and see if, you know, we're working in the right direction or if we need to change up some more things and, you know, just keep fine tuning. But I, I'm pretty confident what I've been doing is going to work, which is, you know, it's great. That's what, that's what I plan on doing. And, you know, it's just, it's perfect. It's a perfect test for me. When, at what point does uh, Gavin come to you and when did they figure out the matchups with, with PwC and bringing you guys in? You guys are the headliner, if you didn't know. Okay. Yeah. When did you find out about the matchup? Because Dave found out after you, um, mm -hmm. you know, they came to him. But when did, did, did Gavin come to you, whoever came to you, when did they come to you with this matchup with Habit? Uh, probably a little over a week ago, maybe. Um, we, were, we were pushing for um, – we it was initially thinking Dean Heil. Um, that just didn't, didn't materialize. And then we were just, like, struggling. And time was catching up to us. So I was reaching out to different people, and Keith was reaching out to different people. And, you know, all of a sudden, he t we, were, we were texting back and forth because I was at home. And uh, – he said, day of habits in, and we just booked it just like that. So it was just, you know, that's, that's kind of the nature of how these cards are going, I think. You know, it, you see these, these matches, you know, announced, and then two weeks later they're wrestling, which I think is great. And I think that's, that's the way we need to keep going. Are you a 2015 grad of high school? 2016. <laughs> 2016. So you were a junior in high school and watching Dave have it. Russell yep. in the NCAA finals against Drake how to shell. And I yep. said to him, I think yeah, it was how to shell. Uh, it was how to shell. said to him, yeah. I said to him, I go, I think you were in the NCAA finals when this guy was in high school. You know, and it's like, it's even crazier now because now you got people wrestling Burroughs who are in youth wrestling. Right. It's cr what is that like for you? And that's what he said. He's like, and he's been older and you even mentioned it, but what's it like wrestling somebody who you were in high school watching probably either on TV or if you're at the event, What's it like wrestling an older guy who you probably looked up to? It's, you know, that's, that's just the nature of the game. It's funny because yesterday, you know, I was at home because I worked out with my brother and uh, I was watching a couple matches on the couch. And my dad was on his computer. I think he was teaching or something like that or getting ready for a class. And I was watching it and I was just sitting, I was like, damn, this guy's pretty old. <laughs> like I didn't like, I didn't, I didn't realize like how old he was, but I think I don't know, he's probably 29, 30 or something like that. He's got a kid. It's like, geez, two, just, two kids. He's, two he's kids. got two kids, right? Yeah. yeah. I just, I like recently followed him on Instagram. His kids like throwing balls off of his Christmas tree or something. I was like, this is crazy, but <clears throat> I mean, it's good. That's, that's, that's why I'm doing it. We're, you know, it's just moving up another level. We're wrestling, you know, full grown men now. So I'm, I'm prepared for it. So here's the next thing. Go watch the, I think, 07 or 08. When did Gavin win it? 08? He won 2008 mm -hmm. NCAAs? Yep. Yep. How old were you? Were Niners? How old were you in 08? Yeah, about, yeah, I was like 10, yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, 9, 10 years old just blows yeah. my mind. And here's the next thing. I, I, I'm dating myself now. I'm aging, right? I'm old, mm -hmm. 41. I, he brought up the story about how I, I, he slept through at the Burnett trained wrestling camp. Um, he was in our club with uh, Eric Burnett. You have Mick Burnett on the team, so you, you're yep. quite familiar with it. Um, and I punished him and I made him run like two miles with dumbbells. Right. Yeah. So that, you know, he, he wasn't even, he might've been an eighth or ninth grader when that happened, Luke. So, so I'm old, man, I'm old. Yeah. And then I'm older than Keith by probably five years or whatever. Yeah. It's just crazy to see how it all comes together and intersects and the eras and things like that, man. But it, it's it is crazy. It's Cause awesome. I, I, I remember, um, in high school, I remember lean, coming to La Trobe to run a camp, my high school, which I was there. Um, Keith, I, I love I loved Keith whenever he was recruiting at uh, Virginia. He was like one of my favorite guys that was recruiting me. And then Drew, me and him worked out probably once or twice a week uh, my junior, senior year of high school, just because like he was, he helped me get a lot better when I was in high school, just understanding wrestling a lot better. And now like we're sharing the coaching staff locker room and it's kind of, like sometimes I think like, dang, this is kind of crazy. You wouldn't, if you look back five years ago, I wouldn't expected this, but it's it's pretty awesome to be around it. Biggest thing I want you to get out of Headley would be the style. You should know that. You should know that yeah. that man. Yeah. The kids, the kids call it drip, right? And that what it is, yeah. and that what the fashion is, Luke. Yeah. I yeah. mean, Luke, I think I'm old enough to be your dad. Technically, when were you born? Ninety-seven. Ninety-seven. Oh my God, I'm so old. Wow. <laughs> wow.
Um, and I don't know if you remember. You might remember because they obviously got you. But Jags, Jaggers, he mm-hmm. was for the artist formerly known as Drew Headley. He was the fashion man. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. Oh, it's wild. It's wild. Yeah. That was a long time ago. A long oh, time yeah. ago. Oh, man. So, okay. What are the duties for you every day? You're volunteer assistant, right? Mm-hmm. And then Pittsburgh Wrestling Club, there's probably some overlap there from the things you got to do. What are your daily duties for Luke Pletcher at, at Pitt Wrestling? What do you do on a daily basis? What was, what's a day look like? Uh, for the most part, for me, I'm mainly just in the room. Um, I pre- we're, we're in different groups now. Um, just because of COVID, you got to limit the amount of people in, in the room. So we're split into two groups. And I practice with uh, lighter weights. I think it's like 50, it's 57 and down. So I practice with them and then I stay back. I stay and uh, help in the room for the heavier weights too. And then I just got like one, one or two paperwork things that I, I try to help out with in the month. And then, you know, with not being able to, you know, have recruits on, on campus and stuff, I can't really help out there. But for the most part, I'm just helping out in the room whenever I can and, you know, trying to help the guys get better in the room. You know, my guy, Mickey Burnett's there. I remember the day Mickey Burnett was born, you know, obviously Burnett trains, near and dear to my heart his dad's one of my best friends his uncle's one of my best friends but like looking that you guys are in ohio now right you got some you got a couple other guys uh that committed from ohio that i was really impressed with but uh i know pa has got to be near and dear to you man it's got to be close to your heart right i mean it's yeah. the best wrestling state prep speaking you know there's it's not up for debate I'm, we're not here to have a debate about it it is literally numbers that. right <laughs> Yeah. It's, it is numbers. You look at the qualifiers every year. You look at the All-Americans every year. I think we get you like once every three or four years, Ohio does get you or, or Jersey mm-hmm. gets you. But you guys, you know, it's the king. When right. you guys recruit Ohio and you recruit PA, is there any doubt in your mind that you guys can't be a top 10 team? No. No, there's no doubt. I mean, we're, we're in, the, in the right place to do it. You know, we got to keep some people home. And I think the, the more that we do that and continue to, you know, build – you know, this is a place that people can do it. You know, that's that was one of the reasons why I didn't go to Pitt initially and why I came back. You know, I wasn't – I didn't want to be the the test dummy to see if you could do it. I wanted to go to somewhere where they know that they can do it. And, you know, and I wouldn't have came back if I didn't think I could achieve my wrestling goals. So, I mean, that's that's why I'm there. And, um, obviously, I'm trying to help the, help the guys that are there now and continue to grow with them. You know, but, but they got the guys there now that are doing it. And, you know, I think it's just, you know, we get a national championship out of some of the guys and continue to, to develop some more and more and more All-Americans. People are going to want to stay. They're going to want to stay home and, you know, represent their hometown. So Volunteers can't do – I don't think you guys can legally do any, like, off-campus recruiting, right? Like, you guys no. – so – but you're a huge part of the recruiting, whether you want to believe it or not. Because if you're yeah. – you're a 133 through a 157. Luke Pletcher's a pretty good guy to learn from, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think there's that. And, and you're still competing. You know, it's right. not like you're in this mode where you're trying to split a, a coaching career with a competitive career and a family, right? You're not right. like Dave. Dave's got two kids, but Dave doesn't have a full time coaching duty. He's, not, he's a full time athlete. But, you're, you know, you're splitting those duties, right? And people are coming there. You're, you're a draw. There's no question about it but you can't openly recruit like as far as the rules go. Right. Right. But you're a draw and you're a part of the recruiting, you know, whether people want to believe that or not, there's no question. When I saw you added when they add you, they added you like, geez, oh, Pete's April, May when they add. Yeah. You. And the end of April, I think. Yeah. And I remember seeing that. And I was like, wow, that's a huge get for, for Pitt. What, what is the, okay. So, so Dave is with Cliff Keene. Mm-hmm. If you've been to Bana, if you've been to Ann Arbor, mm-hmm. it's the standard of RTCs. We all know Nittany Lion is is pretty good. Hawks, Hawkeye Wrestling Club, obviously. And then what they're doing in Cornell is pretty amazing. NJRTC's unreal, split between the two campuses. But if you look, man, the standard, Cliff Keen is just – it is yeah. – on the facility is just unreal. Yeah. I mean, everybody who's got an RTC, what do you guys got to do to jump Pittsburgh Wrestling Club – and get into that, start getting in that conversation, get invited to duels, get it, get, you know, get more of your RTC out there. What are you guys doing to do that? Uh, I think continue to build the program as a, you know, as a whole, 
Um, you know, you look at the, all the successful RTCs, they're linked to successful college programs. Um, I, think, I think there's a trend there. Um, continuing, continually just, uh, you know, continue to build pit wrestling, I think is a, is a big, big factor in that. You know, we got a good AD who is bought in on wrestling. There's, you know, a new facility being built. Well, in the process of starting to get built with everything going on, um, it just it's, it takes time, and we just got to continue to get better and have people want to donate and you know be a part of pit wrestling. So I think it's a work in progress, but we're we're on the right track. How much have you taken from Terval Delagnev? You know, Board Jordan was your teammate, and then your coach, Jaggers, Coach Ryan. What do you think you've taken out of their their books, pages out of their books? and applied to your, your young coaching career pit? Um, I remember thinking about it when I was first, when I graduated college, we had to like write a letter to Buckeye Nation or whatever it was. And I was trying to think about what to write. And I think the main thing I thought of was how different each coach was and how each coach gave me something different. Um, you know, Coach Ryan was just like a model of how to be a man basically and how to like overcome different things. Travell helped a lot with a mindset and how to approach wrestling and how to approach life a little bit. Um, Jaggers was the technical guy for me. He was a, he was the guy that would put me through like the morning workouts and stuff, the extra stuff. Um, and Bo was just the model teammate. And I just really, I admired the way that he was as a man, you know, he had, he had two kids in college, never complained, did everything right. was a good guy. You know, it was, it was just a joy to be around. And, you know, he was bigger, so he helped the bigger guys whenever he was coaching. But, you know, he was just a great person to be around. So I tried to take those things and not only put it towards the guys on the team, but, you know, I think that helped mold me as a person I am today. And, you know, if I can try to give back in my, in my way and, you know, take into the consideration of what they showed me, then, you know, I think it will be beneficial. So I'm just – you know, I'm new at this and I'm, I'm young, but I'm trying to, trying to change and help the guys that, you know, I influence as much as possible. So ultimate, sorry, I got to bring it up. Yep. Ultimate gut punch March last year, March, 2020, mm -hmm. you know, your, for your career to end that way, man, it, it, it was a travesty in my mind for you and Colin Moore to go out like that. And, and, and listen, it's not just you guys, it's all the seniors. Mm -hmm. Because now these guys that were juniors get this year, if they're, if whatever, and yeah. they get next year. Right. And which don't, we can't, I, yeah, I can't, I, if we debate that one, I mean, I'll have to, I'll throw the mic and smash, make it, yeah. I can't do it, which I yeah, know you're, you're probably more angry about that, but, but it is what it is, is what people say. I hate that saying, but it is what it is. Right. You jumped right in there, man. It's a month. It's a month after the one of the worst experiences that ever happened, and it wasn't just you; it was everybody, right? That was mm -hmm. a senior. How were you able to just get right back on the horse and just jump right into it, and and, and know that, hey, maybe going home, pit, it's it's the thing for me. And how much do you think you matured and grew and grew from that 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 experience? I mean, it, it kind of forced you to grow up a little bit. Um, I did an interview, a two weeks ago. Um, for like a local sports net around here, Westmore Sports Network. And they asked, you know, a similar question. Um, but I mean, like, I mean, we're nine months removed now from that. And I think looking back now, the only, like the way to get past it was like, I did like knowing that I did everything I could and I grew, I got a lot better in, in wrestling in that time. Um, so it wasn't like it was a wasted year. You know, I was able to, you know, being that I did have a good season and I ended how it, how it ended, you know, I, if I didn't have that type of season, I probably wouldn't be where I am now. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be a Pittsburgh wrestling club. I probably wouldn't be, you know, sponsored by Rudis. I wouldn't be, you know, there's multiple different things, but I think you just got to, I, I enjoyed getting better. I started enjoying wrestling a little bit more. You know, obviously I think success helps that, but I was enjoying like figuring things out and like, you know, trying to make myself better and trying to fix little things. So I, I started looking at it not as like a total negative, you know, even though it sucks to talk about, but that's just the way it is. And, you know, there's a lot of people who are involved and we're still in the pandemic now. So it's not like it was a two week deal. Everything got canceled and we're done, move on type deal, you know, but 
you know, it does stink. You know, I was happy for some of the guys that got a year back, but at the same time, I was like, dang, that sucks. But, you know, I'm, I'm happy that they got – they get a chance to compete all four years, which is – you know, I think that's a good thing that they did that. But you know, with you and Colin, you and Colin – he won the open, <laughs> you know, yeah. you, you, you're, it's not over. The shoes didn't just get hung up and went right into coaching. That's, I, that's got to help a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this, that's just the way of life. Some things aren't, aren't fair or aren't, you know, the way that you thought it were going to end and you got to move on. So, I mean, my family is all, all safe through the pandemic. We, a lot of, or me and my mom both got it. So, and we survived it. We're fine. So. There's not much else we can do. Okay, so with that, I know you guys are doing really intense testing. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that my nephew, uh, Ian, is at Appalachian State. He is assistant coach. They, I think they get tested every other day. Dave said, I want to say Dave said, have it every day for them. For real? What are you guys? What are you guys? Well, since I got it, I'm, I don't have to get tested. Well, that's, like, that's what I wanted to know. I wanted to, do you got to get, to, yeah, you're, you're yeah, good. I'm, I'm you're an antibody guy. I'm, yeah, I'm immune. No, I'm, but. You're, uh, you are, but you, for yeah. so long, right? <laughs> yeah, for so long. Yeah, no, but, that's uh, a thing though, right? Yeah, supposedly. I don't, so I don't have to get tested for maybe like another two months. Um, but it was my first test that I, you know, I realized I had like a little, I was a little sniffly and had a little cough and I was like, oh, I probably shouldn't come in. And I had a test. I had a scheduled test for the next day, and I went and got tested, and it was positive. So that's it. How long so, ago was that? It was beginning of October. I think. How is your How's your recovery? I'm good. I You're feel good. good. It took It took a little bit to come back. I felt like it took longer to get back into wrestling shape. You know, I felt like probably by instead of like two weeks, three weeks to like, feel like, Oh, I can go full. It took maybe like five, six. Really? I wow. still felt like in shape. I still felt like shape. Like I could, I was wrestling hard, but like, I wasn't like to tip top shape. Like I thought like I could be, you know, it wasn't like big 10 finals last year with. Nick no, no. First but off, also great match, by the way, one of my thanks. faves. Thanks. I was talking to someone about this too. I don't know if this, this is just the theory that could be completely false that I made up in my head, but I think, um, like I've been wrestling for so long and I know a lot of, I mean, everybody has, and like, I don't, I don't really take like that long of breaks, but like once like the pandemic hit and I was like, well, my body is beat, beat up right now. I'm going to take a, you know, a large chunk of time off. Like I never have in my life. And then like trying to get back was like longer and harder than usual. I was like, maybe if, like, I did this more often, maybe I'd be able to recover quickly. Or, like, you can't come back. It was, like, as tip-top shape as you could. But, like, obviously I've proven that wrong because I feel like I'm in tip-top shape now. But <clears throat> I don't know. I was just thinking, like, the way that, that we've been training so long with, like, maybe if you take some time off, it's, like, a week or something like that. But I took, you know, probably close to a month, three weeks off the mat. And – I never felt like getting back was going to be as I didn't think it was going to be as hard as it was. Wow. Wow. That, and, and obviously we're going to see December 22nd yeah. at 8 PM. If you're, yeah. if you're back, we're going to find out. And oh yeah, that, that it, was a long time ago. I'm back. I'm just excited for the matchup. Uh, when you talk to Gavin, you're obviously learning so much. Mm -hmm. Dave came from Edinburgh and he went to Michigan, right? Cliff Keens mm -hmm. in Michigan in the Bonner center. And I – have you been to Edinburgh? I have. You have not? No. Edinburgh is as is, is gritty of a place that you'll ever grow, go, Luke. Edinburgh is – it would remind you very much so of high school. It's, mm -hmm. it's the very small school feel, high school gym feel, the wrestling room's in the basement and this dungeon. And he went from this crazy spectrum. He went over here. To, I can't even put Michigan on. It's almost like it doesn't exist on the same plane. It's wild. It does, yeah. obviously. But you went from the new facility you guys were in last year, the Taj Mahal, the standard mm -hmm. of wrestling rooms, uh, Cavelli. Well, Cavelli's the, the – uh, Jennings is the wrestling room. Yeah, Cavelli's yeah, the competition arena at yep. Ohio State, which you share yep. with volleyball. Yep. 
But you volleyball's facility isn't attached to it, is it? They practice out in the Cavelli. Oh, they okay. So yeah. your facility are there lockers in there too, though? Yeah. So that is their you do share the facility essentially. Mm-hmm. But that five mat room or six mat room, the Taj Mahal, that's all Ohio State's. Yep. You go back to Steel Town. Mm-hmm. It's a little different. You still in Fitzgerald? Yeah. Yeah, you're still in that, that room in Fitzgerald. I like that room. It's a cool room. I do too. I it's do a cool like room. It. it gets hot. Yeah. It'll get yeah. hot in that room. Yeah, I like but it. Talk, talk, you know, Dave talked about the spectrum of mm-hmm. Edinburgh to Michigan. And then you could say Edinburgh, Ohio State. Edinburgh, Penn State. Talk about the difference between Ohio State, Pittsburgh, resources, facilities. What's that been like? Um, it hasn't been much of a transition for me because, you know, at first at Ohio State, I only got one year in the Jennings facility, um, which was great. I loved it. I felt spoiled in it, but I loved it. Um, you know, it's Steelwood, which is the old wrestling room at Ohio State. You know, the locker room was bad. Um, I felt like, I, I mean, I was. Our high school locker room was nicer than Steelwood's locker room. And, um, you know, it was a, it was a similar feel to – like, I felt like it was, like, a grimy room. I mean, it was great. I, I'm a fan of the grimy dungeon rooms. I don't know what it is about it, but I, I do like it. Um, but the transition, I mean, I, I've always liked Pitt's room, and I think they have a great facility. Um, it's, it is a little bit different, just the – I don't know. It's just a different feel because, you know, I, I for a long time, the Ohio State was home, so I had to change that. And, you know, this is, this is becoming, you know, this is my new home, so – it's just a different transition, but it's, it's, been, it's been great so far. I got no complaints. So Ohio people would say this. They'd be like, oh, there's mountains everywhere. There's mountains mm-hmm. in Pittsburgh. They're hills, but they're there mountains is. to Ohio people, right? There's no – Oh, yeah. Columbus oh, yeah. is flat, man. Where I'm from yeah. in northwest Ohio is flat. It is mm-hmm. flat. Uh, it's a little more rolly where I live now in northeast Ohio near Chagrin Falls, but it is – yeah, man. It, in that sense, it's a different world. When you talk topography and the – the landscape, it's a different deal. Oh, yeah. yeah we, I mean, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I was raised here in Pittsburgh. So, like, I know, I know the hills and I, we have a hunting camp in like Zanesville, Ohio area. Um, so, like, I know it's flat and I knew going to Ohio that it was going to be, Ohio State, it was going to be flat and it's a different, it's definitely a different world out there. Um, I was surprised that they don't get as much snow. No, as, they don't. They like, don't. I was really surprised by that. We my roommate crushed. was from Florida. We get crushed. Oh, yeah. You do. I, where I live in Northeast Ohio, we get crushed. We live in the, yeah. the snow belt. And it's yeah. two hours yeah. away. North, North, yeah, Northeast Ohio gets crushed. But my my roommate was from is from Florida. And, like, his first year, like, in the dorm, I was like, oh, you're going to feel the wrath of, you know, northern Michigan or northern Ohio or whatever, central Ohio snow. And he had, like, no winter clothes. And, like, that whole – the whole winter, they got like maybe an inch total. I was like, "This is disappointing." I talked it up, and it didn't deliver. But is it Elijah? Yeah, clear. Yeah, clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Lake Highland Prep. Yep. I interviewed him after he won the Dvorak and whatever, twenty thirteen or whatever, twenty fourteen, whatever. It was. I'm yeah. old. Luke. I'm old, Luke. Yeah. Uh, as far as Gavin, Pittsburgh Wrestling Club getting this event on Rockfin live. You and Dave have it, headliners. What have you learned from Gavin? You know, I asked what you learned from Coach Ryan, Serval, Jaggers, Bo Jordan. What have you learned from Coach Lean? What have you learned from – I know you got the drip, clothing, mm-hmm. right, the style from Coach Headley. But, you know, Lean, Gavin, Headley. What have you learned from those guys and getting an event like this and drawing eyeballs to Pittsburgh Wrestling Club? What have you learned from them in the promotion sense? Um, I think – just the continuing to, you know, want to try new things and, you know, continue to grow. I mean, this isn't something you have to do. You know, you you don't have to put on a card. You don't have to, you know, try to evolve, you know, the program and put on events like this. It's not like a necessary requirement, but, you know, they're always willing to to try new things and, um, you know, help. They're, They're trying to grow pit wrestling and they're doing everything they can to make sure that happens. So, I mean, it's just great to be a part of a, a coaching staff that wants to continue to get better. Okay, I asked Dave this. I'll ask you. 
I'm not going to tell you the names that came out, but you can, these, these aren't call outs, you know, whatever be call outs. I don't care. Who do you want to wrestle? And we know we got Dave habits there, Dave, you know, the names that came up, I'll, I'll, I'll share if you've got one, but what's a guy who you want in one of these events. We already know Dave habits next Tuesday. Give me some names of guys you want to wrestle and run either run it back with. And you know, Nick Lee actually came up on his, he said, Nick Lee, that was a name he, he said, and, and what he did to you in the duel. I can't believe yeah. how you, it was amazing how you turned that resolve around. That was amazing. <laughs> I'm like, he is, he got you in the duel, man. He got you. Oh, yeah. the third period, yeah. I knew you weren't going to win. Yeah, he got me. He got you. And yeah. then to turn that resolve around in the Big Tens, was that, is that Rutgers, wasn't it? Yep. Ah, oh, it was just like, how did he do that? And it just, yeah. I think it's a testament to those coaches and, and you, obviously, Luke, and your talent and your, your hard work, diligence, and how you changed your style from – a 133 to a 141, it's awesome. But give me some names you want. Give me some some guys you want to wrestle. Um, some guys I want to wrestle. Um, you know, obviously Nick Lee is, you know, it's one that I think should happen eventually. Um, we were, they actually reached out for me to wrestle in the the previous uh, Penn State event, but I literally, I was very upset that this happened because I don't want to think I don't want people to say that I was ducking because I'd never do that. But I was like on day, I had, I took a week off and like I said, I have a hunting camp in Ohio and I took some, I took some time off, went hunting, you know, got away from wrestling a little bit. And they called me on like day six to wrestle. And I was like, if you guys would have called me like two days earlier, three days earlier, I would a hundred percent been in, but I wasn't, I wouldn't have been in good shape and I wasn't going to take a match that, you know, I wasn't ready for. So, you know, obviously that's one that I'm, I'm eager to get again. Um, also, you know, anybody I'm, – I'm down to wrestle anybody anytime. Um, I think Zane is someone I'd love to test myself, you know, and see, see where I am. I, he's very physical, and he's, you know, someone I looked up to as a, as a kid. Um, but, you know, those, those are two guys that I think they're, they're, they're killers, and I'd love, to, I'd love to match up with them. All right, I'm going to give you the, the name that really came up, and now you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I want to wrestle that guy. Yanni. He was like, if you're not bringing Yanni up. Oh, yeah. Of course. He's just like, Yanni is the guy to wrestle because they, you get in so many crazy positions with him and you, you really get to test your scrambling out, which I don't know why I would never want to test my scrambling against him. <laughs> I yeah. would just stay in a stance and try and fight real hard, you know? Like, the dude yeah. is just, yeah, his scrambling's an alien. Yeah, I mean, there's just so many good guys that, I, that you want to wrestle. It's hard to, like, just – when you said it, my mind went like a hundred different places, a hundred different names, but he's, he's so different. He's hard to figure out. And he's always, he's another person who just continue like changes things. Like you see him do one thing for like five straight matches and then the next one, he changes it up. You know, he's just, he's so, his offense is so diverse and his defense is incredible. So, you know, he's, he's a fun one. All right. Last thing I want to talk about is when little Luke Pletcher bumped up to 141 as a freshman. That was like the ultimate team thing for me ever, dude. Because you weren't even the yeah. starter. And what happened? What happened that you went up to 41? You were a 33. You were a legit, yeah. legit ever. You were a 33, like late weight wise. Man, you were huge. Yeah. But what happened with that? Why, why'd you go up to 41? I forget what, what happened. Someone got hurt. What happened? Yeah. Well, originally coming in to college, it was like, okay, you're probably going to go right away at 133. Like if, you know, it was, if everything goes the way we think it's going to go, you'll, you'll go 133. And then NATO decided like 133 was probably best for him. So it was like, okay, we'll red shirt, I'll redshirt this year and figure out next year what's going to go on. And then <clears throat> Keyshawn got hurt early. That's what it was. Um, I think, I forget who, was, who he was wrestling or what happened. And it was right. He didn't go to Cliff Keen. And they were there and found out that he wasn't going to – probably wasn't going to be able to make it back for the year. So they called me while they were out there, and I bumped up. There was – you know, it was I, – I, I felt like I was ready and I was getting better, like, in the room. But, you know, it was just a different – I mean, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to throw myself out there if I could score some points at Nationals. And, you know, I felt like I was going to get better as the year went on. And that, that was – that's what I did, and I was, I was happy to do it. You were 2-2, two two, weren't you? 
two and two, yeah, something yeah, like that. No, maybe like, three, maybe three and two. That's three and two, unreal because you were clearly out. You were so small. I was like, he is not a one forty one pounder. And then when you no. were one thirty three, I'm like, he might not be a one thirty three pounder anymore. It was crazy. No. It was like this, right? I mean, am I making that up? No, yeah, you're right. It was just, um, I felt like when I was making 33 my freshman year, it was still, like, difficult, but, like, it, it was where I needed to be for sure. Um, and then I went up to 41, and I was, like, naturally lighter than I was when I was making 33, which was frustrating. So I was, like, trying to put on weight. And I ended up, I ended up getting bigger as the year went on. But, I, like, another guy that I'd like to wrestle was Ashnall. You know, I, had, I remember wrestling him, and that was, like, the first heartbreaking loss. Because, like, I, I blew that match. 100% I blew that match. Um, and that was in the round of 16. And, and I felt like if I beat him, I had a good run to be an All-American. And we wrestled. And it was get, we wrestled three times that year. In the dole, he whooped me. And then Big Ten semis, he beat me by, like, two or three points. And then I had him second round of nationals. And I think I was up three with, like, oh my gosh. 45 seconds a minute. And he escaped took me down and then rode me out and got like one, one of one. This is when you were a, or or like when you were a little guy. You were up yeah. the late. That's crazy. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know if I got anything else for you, man. I just love talking to you. Awesome guy to talk to. I'm going to try and get in there for some early uh, workout stuff, film some stuff, kind of cool. just see what you guys are doing. Meet at the, the club we're going to um, the gym we're going to be at. And uh, yeah, just kind of figure stuff out and, December 22nd, 6 o'clock on Rockfin, live. Yep. Live. Headliner, Luke Pletcher, Dave Habit. Do you have any – do you want any, any parting shots at Dave? Is he a cotton-headed ninny muggins? Or I know that yeah, you're we'll a nice stick, guy. We'll stick with that. Dave's a cotton-headed ninny muggins. <laughs> Dave Habit's a cotton-headed ninny muggins. I love it. Yep. That's about as much as I'm going to get out of either one of you. Nicest guys on the planet. Luke Pletcher, thank you for the time. I'd normally stick around and talk to you, but I got to run. Good luck to you next week. We will see you in Pittsburgh. We'll see you in Pittsburgh. Subscribe. Subscribe, PWC. And Panther I mean, Wrestling I, I, Club. Panther Wrestling Club. And I know there's a tip button on there, so if you're feeling generous, don't be afraid of Oh, a tip. Feel froggy. Tip button. I love it. Luke Pletcher, good luck next week. Pittsburgh Wrestling Club versus Dave Habit. See you there, bud. We'll see you.